Hello friends, in today's video we are talking about a dehancer. If you guys are new, my name is Blaze Pivovar, and I'm a freelance filmmaker based in Kansas City. I currently work on a lot of projects in the music space, as well as nonprofit doc style storytelling, as well as a few weddings per year. I've gotten to use Dehancer and test it out on a variety of projects over the last month, and I'm excited to share my thoughts with you guys today. Dehancer was kind enough to send over their pro version for me to test out inside DaVinci Resolve in exchange for an honest review of the product. While I was provided the plugin for free, Dehancer does not get any input on what I say in this video, and they do not get to see it until it goes live. In a world of YouTubers recommending products in the video space that you should buy, you know, endorsing things, saying things like, you should get this product, that's not what I'm here to do today. I'm gonna to walk you guys through my honest thoughts based on my workflow, the projects I'm working on, the final image characteristics that I'm looking for so that hopefully you can make a decision if this plugin would help you or if ultimately you don't need it. I definitely had heard of Dehancer before they reached out. I've seen other YouTubers using this, but I haven't really been interested just due to the price point of $399 for the pro version. Um, with DaVinci Resolve Studio costing around $300, it does already include a lot of similar effects to get film characteristics and i've just leaned towards trying to use what is already built into the software so i feel like i'm coming into this review with a good perspective of you know being pretty familiar with what davinci resolve offers and just curious if there would be anything that i would really love from dancer i did want to mention up front that i do have experience shooting genuine super 8 film Sending it off to a lab, working with the files in post is pretty familiar to me. And I've recently gotten into shooting some 16 millimeter films. So I'm starting to learn more and more of the workflow of working with different film formats. So starting off with what is Dehancer? Essentially, Dehancer is a plugin that helps you mimic the look and characteristics of film. It loads into your editor, in my case, that's DaVinci Resolve, and lets you pretty quickly transform your digital footage into something much more organic and filmy. My strategy for using Dehancer was still to rely primarily on my LUTs for my color grading, getting my image from how it looks straight out of camera to a really pleasing result, and then I was really just using Dehancer to kind of polish off the image and give it characteristics of film. And so that is something that you guys should know. I did find it quite tricky to just use what's built into Dehancer to completely grade an image from scratch. I think it's great for adding a lot of those filmy characteristics, but it being a one-stop shop for color grading for me, it just wasn't really there. I did want to hop into DaVinci Resolve really quick just to show you guys some of the features. So I'm gonna come over here to our effects, search for a dehancer. We're just gonna throw this on a node and right away you'll see some color tweaks happen. And then you're gonna see basically everything exists over here in your effects bin. And so starting off, you have your input. So this is where you would select, um, you know, for example, this is a Rec. 709 clip, but you could come in here and pick a specific camera, for example, the Fujifilm X-H2S. And if you shot an F-Log2, it would automatically have the transformation that you need. Um, we're just going to go back to Rec. 709, um, but you can basically adjust your exposure. And so I'm just going to go down here. So this is where you select your film stock. So this is enabled by default, but you could turn it off if you don't want to use a particular film stock, um, but there's tons of options in here. I'll just quickly scroll through them so you guys can see all the options. Um, we're just gonna leave it off for now, but this is where you can toggle it on and off and also affect the push-pull look of the film. Below that is the film developer. This is where, yeah, after you pick your film stock, you can actually choose kind of how it's developed. So you can adjust your contrast after the fact along with your kind of saturation with the color boost. Um, again, we're just gonna turn this off for now. Just wanted to walk you guys through all the features. Here's film compression. So you guys will see the highlights of our image down here getting compressed. You can affect, you know, where you want that threshold to be as well as how far down you want it to pull. Then there's the expand. This lets you just readjust your black point and white point so you could bring this up, if you did compress your highlights and you still wanted to bring the highlights back up, you can do that with the white point. And then this is the print area. You can choose between linear, city on film log, or like a 3513 or 2383 film print. Um, this is where you do that. Below that you have the color head, which is adjusting some of the colors when you do enable it. 
uh, but this is just adjusting some of the colors, pushing and pulling them in different directions, um, as well as the mid-tones, warming or cooling, same thing with the shadows, and then the highlights. They give you really easy control just with these sliders. Down below we have film grain, so you can just enable this on or off. You can really quickly adjust the size and the amount. And if this is still too much, then you can pull it out of the shadows, midtones, and highlights, or tweak these individually need be. So maybe you want less shadow noise, um, but you're okay with it being in the midtones and highlights. And then below film grain, it's just gonna be the rest of the effects. So halation, you can turn it on and off really easily. Bloom, you can turn it off really easily. There's vignette, film breadth, gate weave, and then they also let you see false color, um, and any clipping indicators here, I find that pretty helpful. You can also generate LUTs, affect the total output, and then we're just gonna leave the quality at normal. And so that is just a little overview of Dehancer inside of Resolve. This is kind of how you toggle on and off all the controls. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys just where this image ended up. And so right here, um, this is the grade. So this is using my LUTs, but then I was using Dehancer here for a lot of the effects. And so down here you will see film grain as well as halation and bloom. You can kind of see this on the edge of her hair over here, um, adding a little bit. I just wanted it pretty subtle, but I do love how it kind of gives just a little bit of tinge over there. And then I was using the grain as well. I feel like it looked really great. So that's just a little example of how I was using Dehancer on this specific clip. So here's what I like about Dehancer. I think the installation process was incredibly easy and straightforward. They have a lot of helpful resources included when you download it to help the installation just go super smoothly. I love that when working with a piece of third-party software, um, it just needs to integrate really easily and that was awesome. The next thing that I think they really nailed was just kind of the pipeline of effects. This is something that DaVinci kind of leaves up to you. You have to put your effects in the correct order using nodes and I love that when Dehancer loads, it sort of already has the correct pipeline for all your effects, like grain, halation, bloom, the film stock. They really took a lot of time to think through how these effects need to get applied to the image in order to get a result that really looks like film. I think this is really awesome and kind of takes the guesswork out of, you know, where to put certain effects on your node tree. The first effect that I really loved was the film compression. You can just simply toggle this on and off and it sort of compresses the highlights of your image. I know that this is a characteristic of film and this is something that I've actually incorporated into my Meadow Film Effect. It's a very similar effect, um, but basically just compresses the highlights of your image. And I really love how easy they made this to toggle on and off. I think my two favorite features of the plugin was the way that it processed both halation and bloom. I think in my opinion, this is pretty second to none for just toggling these on and off and how they look. I think it looks incredibly realistic and organic and tweaking it is really like intuitive with the sliders. I think this is something that I wish DaVinci would improve upon because there are Glow and Halation plugins already in DaVinci, but I have found that they take significantly more kind of finessing to get them to look realistic. And so I think this is one of my favorite parts about Dehancer. I think it's definitely a strength. The way that it's processing, kind of the way those highlights are looking in your image, I think looks really organic. And I think they kind of knocked it out of the park with that effect. I did really love the grain effect in Dehancer. I found it really easy to use to adjust the size. And I really loved how they gave you control over the shadows, midtones, and highlights. DaVinci does do this, but I have found that a lot of the data actually sits in the midtone slider. And I think Dehancer's just seems to work a little bit more um, intuitively that you can kind of pick, you know, what is in the brightest parts of your image, how much grain do you want in the shadows. I found it kind of a lot more intuitive inside of Dehancer. I really love that they give users the ability to toggle through different film stocks. While I didn't particularly rely on this functionality, I think if you are trying to emulate a specific film stock, I think that is a huge selling point for this product. The ability to switch from 250D to 200T to 500T to something on the photo side like Kodak Portrait 400, I think them kind of incorporating those characteristics is really nice. I really love the ease of use of this plugin. It really just has sliders and then a few drop-down menus. 
think DaVinci can be a little bit intimidating for users at times with a lot of like color wheels and kind of fancy looking controls. The answer makes it super simple. It's just sliders and I think it makes using the plugin super intuitive. The last thing that I'm gonna put on my list that I really love is just the fact that it does not have a subscription. Although the price is a little bit high, you pay one time and you have it and continue to get updates on new film stocks that they put out. I really love this and it's kind of the main reason I switched to Resolve from Premiere. I just am trying to get away from subscriptions as you're kind of just always paying for service. Okay, so moving on to some things that I did not like about Tehancer. I really did struggle to get an image that I really liked just using Tehancer. I was kind of relying on my LUT still and just some features that are built into Resolve to really tweak the colors in the way that I wanted to get a final result. I'm not looking to specifically emulate a certain film stock or you know to make a one-to-one -one comparison. I'm really just trying to get to a final image that I really like that borrows characteristics from film. So I wish that Dehancer could have got me to a final image that I just really loved, that I put on some of the presets and with a few simple tweaks, I had a really good looking image. I found that it really does well of getting you going in the right direction, but you really need to know what you're doing when it comes to color grading to really polish off the image and get it to a final look that is really pleasing. And because of that, I did find it a little hard to be switching between DaVinci's controls and Dehancer's controls and just was a little bit confused, you know, should I be tweaking something on the node before, something on the node after, should I put Dehancer at the end? They have a lot of best practices, um, but I did find that I was a little bit confused of how to get to a final image that I really liked. Another big con for me, I think it's just the price. For $3.99, I do think it is quite expensive especially for what it's giving you. I think if emulating a specific film stock and doing a one-to-one -one match is your goal, then I think it could easily be worth that $3.99. But if your hope is just to kind of get some filmy characteristics, I do think it's quite high compared to the pro version of DaVinci Resolve um, that you already have for $300. You can emulate a lot of these effects pretty easily. And so I did wanna just include a list of things that I would love to see from Dehancer. I hope that the team watches this and takes some of this into account if it's helpful. I would love to see some in-depth tutorials from the Dehancer team themselves of how they are getting their final results. I saw some really incredible looking footage on their website of comparing real 16 millimeter film to a few different digital cameras and they almost look indistinguishable to my eye. I wish I could see kind of behind the scenes of everything that they tweaked, you know, even from how they shot it to how many tweaks they made um, after simply applying the film stock. You know, is it five simple tweaks or is there 50 tweaks? They do have some blogs and some PDF guides, but I think some like in-depth tutorials showing real world scenarios would be incredible coming from the team themselves. I would also really love to see grain presets. DaVinci Resolve has this built in, but I would love to be able to toggle between 8 millimeter, 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter film grains because using the slider, I think I found myself kind of guessing, you know, how large of a grain I wanted or how small. I would love to be able to just select 16 millimeter, 250D, similar to the film stocks, and have the grain match really closely. I think something that they could include to make this a really enticing product at $3.99 would be the inclusion of some pre-keyed overscanned film mats for both Super 8mm as well as 16mm. Something that goes beyond just a PNG overlay. I would love to see actually, you know, keyed out mats that really help sell the film look. That would give me something that is really similar to what I would get back from a lab that is overscanned with the mat that jitters and moves and matches. Um, I'm sure they can't build this directly into the plugin, but including some drag and drop mats and film burns, I think would definitely push this a lot more in the um, direction of being worth $3.99. The last suggestion I'm gonna give is just about the light version. And so they do offer a light version of this plugin for $199. I think my ideal world would be the light version, but it only includes compression, grain, halation, and bloom. I believe some of those effects are included, but I don't think halation is. And I think, you know, if we're only charging $199 for that, those features to me kind of feel like the core toolkit that I would pull from using Dehancer, and so I would love to see all of those included in the light version. Um, I think that would be really enticing to a lot of filmmakers out there, and so hope that that feedback would be helpful. Okay, so who is Dehancer for? 
I do not think Dehancer is for beginners. I would definitely point beginners just towards LUTs, um, working with features built into Resolve just because they don't have a ton of money and they really just need to learn the basics. I think they could get overwhelmed trying to use Dehancer and trying to emulate film stocks when they really haven't even you know, learned the basics of color correction. And so, yeah, I would definitely push Dehancer towards intermediate or advanced users, and especially towards those who are wanting to match and emulate real film. I think if you're shooting, you know, real 16 millimeter film alongside digital and wanting to, you know, match them very closely and kind of build some recipes for yourself. I think Dehancer is awesome. I think it's one of the only things out there on the market that does this in a really clean and kind of intuitive way. And so definitely would recommend it for more advanced users. So how will I use Dehancer moving forward? I kind of see this as a tool in my toolbox to push my image more in the direction of film. I really think they knocked Bloom and Hellation out of the park. And so, yeah, if I am wanting a video that is a tad more stylized, I think just doing film compression, Bloom, Hellation, and Grain, just all in Dehancer is great. And, you know, is a really easy way to push my image in that direction without having to kind of stack the effects on nodes using Resolve. When it comes to how I use Dehancer, I did just want to show you guys my process. And so here is the image just straight out of camera. And then here it is graded with my meta LUTs. This is kind of giving the image, you know, its general characteristics. And then here is the effects added using Dehancer. And then we're gonna actually switch to my subtle film effects with added film grain. And then here's the heavy version. And then back to Dehancer. There are so many different ways to get the film look to kind of emulate film characteristics. If you guys are interested in checking out any of my film effects products, they are relatively inexpensive and pretty easy to use. They're just power grades that you kind of apply to footage regardless of the camera you shoot on to kind of polish it off, um, similar to how I'm using Dehancer. If you guys are interested in using Dehancer and you think it'd be great for your workflow or your needs, I am gonna leave a promo code below for 10% off you guys can use this to get a little bit of a discount. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it honest and helpful and that it cuts through kind of a world of YouTubers pushing products and convincing you that you need something. At the end of the day, I just wanted to show you guys my honest thoughts, how I would use this product and you know, let you kind of decide, is this something that I like? Is this something that's worth $3.99? Um, or should I spend a little bit more time just using what's built into Resolve? or look into some other options out there. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting this channel. And until next time, peace.